So we have a couple things to recap from this weekend that we did already cover. Um, what what are the stuff that we need to read? We, we definitely talked about this earlier and I forgot already. Um, Capcom, Nintendo, and this. Just those three? We don't have to do Microsoft, right? We did Microsoft. We did Microsoft. We did Microsoft. You were here. We did that in person. You're right. Okay. I'm tr I forgot that that was like a stream thing and like while it was like the second part of the stream. Okay, cool. We did Square and Microsoft in this night one. True. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Moving on. So, let's pull up a little bit of a list. So, Capcom. E3 2021. Capcom, who are you on, IGN? I'm going to see if they have something. I don't know if they... Yeah, they did. I'll send the link via Discord. Give me one second. There you go. Nope. And is. with that Badoop, you know that uh, Ant has received my message. <clears throat> All right. So, welcome to the I recap of Capcom. Um, Nintendo, that happened today, earlier in the day, and Bandai, which just happened. Um, yep. Overall, Nintendo had the most stuff. Um, Bandai really didn't show up with anything besides the extended interview of the director of the next uh, game from their company that you Dark Games Anthology names and stuff and things but yeah let's start off with Capcom um, so we live streaming this did we were, were we in person for this for Capcom I think we might have been no online. no we yeah, weren't we, we were, were online. we were doing this so um, they pretty much started off with Resident Evil Village um, we still have not finished yet. Um, because obviously that took a little bit of a back seat to, uh, E3. We did get past one of the bigger boss fights live on our stream. Yes, we did. So if you're impatient, you can go back and watch that, uh, boss fight and that whole entire gameplay on our Twitch for a little bit longer before it gets uploaded to YouTube. Um, but they didn't give us any details. They just said there is DLC coming. That's it. We'll have more to say later. Yeah. Which was kind of, like, annoying, in my opinion. Like, why not just announce that online or something? Like, there's no reason or, to... Or just don't. Yeah, or just, <laughs> just don't. don't bring it up. Yeah. And just wait until you actually have it done. Um, they also showed a little bit of the online multiplayer of Resident Evil Reverse. Y'all right. know about that. If you listen to the podcast, there was a little slip included inside of um, the game... Everyone who's bought Resident Evil 8 gets that for free. Um, mm -hmm. We only have one copy, so only one of us would have a chance to play it if either of us even want to in the first place. Um, but it doesn't look terrible. It, it very much looks like a over-the-shoulder third-person online shooter where you right. can either be the, the heroes of the Resident Evil games shooting each other for some random reason, and then it looks like you can also play as the uh, infected zombie type characters as well which is pretty neat right but um, um yeah. i don't know man capcom is pretty underwhelming um kev on twitter i had to retweet him because he says napcom and i was like man that is the perfect yeah way to describe it the because i mean we can kind of we're not just been a million years like we got monster hunter stories 2 which was mm -hmm. revealed a minute ago they went more in depth on that with the Nintendo, more cell shaded Breath of the Wild esque looking Monster Hunter game, more story driven, more uh, you know RPG ish. Yeah, less about fighting the monsters, more about like being like companions with them, almost like slightly Pokemon esque, where it's yeah. like you're you're a monster rider as opposed to being a hunter, which is interesting to me. Um, like, like forging and. Mm -hmm. making weapons hatching eggs getting material crafting ha yeah um i mean that all that, a lot of that is in regular montana but this is on a different like an rpg-ish style of that stuff yeah it definitely looks a lot more fun to me than a regular monster hunter because it's more about mm -hmm. like the story as opposed to like taking down these monsters um right. there was also some monster hunter rise news with where they're moving DLC. forward um with some dlc they showed a roadmap as well towards the end, but the first DLC is a collaboration with the new game coming out. 
where you can get um, the outfit of that little cat character in Monster Hunter Rise that is like one of the main characters in stories. And then the outfits as well you can get into Rise, which is pretty neat. Um, right. Let me scroll to the end of the video where it shows that road map. I think it was around here. There, I just missed it. So on this road map, that comes out in June um, where you get that. Like its name is Sukino. It's event-based mm -hmm. um, for Monster Hunter Stories 2. And then 24th, there's some more downloadable content and event quests. And then July 9th is where you can transfer your save data from Monster Hunter Stories 2 to get the rider armor in Rise. And then at the end of July, there is another Capcom collab, which has not been announced what it is yet. And in August, there's another Capcom collab after that as well. So yeah. we'll have to stick around to see what those two are. Those are all event quests and like DLC-based. And I think these are all free DLC if you have the game as well. So that's pretty neat. Um, I most likely Cap think I'm going to play. Capcom is kind of known for this too. They're Capcom because they like in integrating other Capcom properties into other Capcom properties. Yeah. Because I think Monster Hunter World, they had like like Mega Man was in it or something like that or Zero. One of them was in it. I didn't know that. That sounds No, silly. I know they had like, like was it Ryu in it? Maybe. One of them you could be like classic Mega Man. Like it was like Digita 8-bit Mega Man rock, walk, running around there. That's pretty cool. Um, I forgot which monster that was, though. I think that might have been, like, Ultimate, uh, ult, 4 Ultimate or something like that. Gotcha. Um, I don't know if I plan to play Rise. I know that when Nico first got that, he was hyping that up, and he liked it a lot when he was playing it. With the, uh, it. It, it looks good, but I'm, I'm feeling like I might play Stories, too. There is a mm -hmm. um, demo that was announced, and if you right. play the demo, your data transfers over to the main game once that comes out. Mm -hmm. And that is very interesting to me because I would like to do that. So I'm definitely going to play the demo. I'll play that on my Switch um, after I finish Breath of the Wild finally. Um, but yeah, that looks like a good time. Next right. we saw uh, the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Which was clearly the biggest thing they showed. Yeah. Um, while neither of us really have an affinity for this um, property per se... It does look like a fun time, I guess. There, it got to a part where I literally predicted the outcome of the thing, which was kind of funny. You solved the case through the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I literally solved the case, because I, I forget what it was. I'm going to skip forward to it in the video. Like, they have this detective character, and I guess you have him. He, like, predicts what happened of the crime, and then you as the attorney, which is funny, have to correct the deducer. And then say, no, you're actually wrong. It's actually this. And at the very beginning of the trailer, once like it's like a woman screams and you go in this room and then the guy's standing right with the beard. I'm mm -hmm. like, that's not a dude. That's a woman in disguise. And I just say that as a joke, jesting. And in fact, it was. Hold. Yeah. You literally like rotate around the character and it's got like golden locks out the back of the, the, the mm -hmm. wig or whatever. And I'm like, oh, look at that. But, um... I don't know if this is a game I'll purchase, per se. I'm not a huge fan of, like, text-heavy based games. Like, it's just too much. Um, but that comes out July 27th, so pretty pretty soon. Um, and it's a prequel to the actual Ace Attorney games. It's, like, back in the, uh, back in Great Britain, where this <laughs> legal man can wear um, a ninja <laughs> sword. Legal man. Yeah. And that was it. <laughs> pretty much, like, for the big reveals of Capcom. That was another one that ended, and we're just like, wait, what? Yeah. Um, it was very weird. A lot of th these smaller panels for, like, like Gearbox specifically, and then, like, this one, and once we get to it with Bandai, we thought there was going to be more, mm -hmm. and they really did not show up with a lot. Um, and it was very disappointing for m most of them, in my opinion. Like, um, like Ubisoft set our standards high for like yeah. the companies that are like not necessarily like a big name like xbox or sony or something like that they set our uh, standards high we're like yeah these people are here to show up and like right. show some good stuff and then they just decided nope we're, we're just here like even square showed up like but i don't know so i feel like i don't know i a lot of companies are clearly in this weird phase of coming out of pandemic era 
and like not coming out of it, but like still recovering from pandemic era and coming out of pandemic era. I feel like, I feel like we keep, we've been saying this, like you and Nico is on the show. We've been saying this since we kind of started that I think things are going to ramp from two, like from 2022 on, I think we're back to regularly scheduled program as far as the gaming space goes. In the stream. Sorry about that, guys. Listening. What happened? Wait, time out. Time the fuck out. No more Heroes 3. We got, like, gameplay. Oh, yeah. In the uh, the treehouse, they showed it. I didn't see it. I I saw the the thing about it. I didn't see that either. That's kind of abysmal. I would have liked to see that. They should have fucking announced that. What's going on here? Sorry. Because the treehouse, they always sneak in something. Like, when they they released um, Samus Returns for 3DS. Mm Mm-hmm. They didn't announce it in the direct. They, within the treehouse thing, they just like, oh, we also have this. So yeah. you never saw it. It's like you're blindsided by it. But yeah, um, so do we want to move on to Nintendo, or do we want to save Nintendo for last and just specifically talk about what, um, what's it called? Just showed. Um, Bandai showed. And then we'll end with N- Nintendo, because they actually showed up with shit today. <laughs> yeah, Bandai. Uh, Bandai came in showed us house of ashes mm-hmm. and left yeah it, it, they barely well here's the thing showed their own name i didn't need you see the word bandai and echo when that thing started out no they they did not the, the funny part is that they didn't show us that game we were shown that game on thursday at the summer games fest right and we were high on it then because it was like already looking good um once we found out that it was from who it was from i was like yeah i'm down for this 100 percent Mm-hmm. Um, and then that seems to be the general consensus of this year's E3. It's like give it to Jeff to show off, and then we'll show more at later events, like our personal events. But then some of them didn't even do that, which was a joke. Um, right. But yeah, they showed, and not necessarily more gameplay per se. Like there was a couple gameplay scenes that were like sprinkled in there in the interview. Um, I liked some of the stuff that the guy was saying. I will at least admit that, like, he was talking my language like i liked like the game talk about it like he was talking about how like they have qtes in the game but with the accessibility settings you have a way to turn off like a a qte warning to let you know it's coming just because like some people don't want to know that's coming and they just want to like you know experience it a different way Mm -hmm. um other stuff like that there's 60 unique deaths for all of the characters so it's not like there's one definitive ending it's there's so many different ways it can go you can right. kill your whole entire squad of like people, or you can try your best to keep them all alive by the end, and then that offers so much replayability for these types of games. I know that's the thing for Until Dawn. It's very reminiscent of um, Detroit Become Human. I like there's the different like mm-hmm. webs of like area where you can go. It's a little bit different for Until Dawn, so I don't think you have the option to go back like like that where it's like specific right. choices and shit. I don't know though. And see, this is news to me. I've never played any of these games. Yeah. They're very, very cool because it's like you're choosing your story that you want to experience. You're choosing the direction the game goes. Like, while mm. there technically is, like, one ending, like, you're obviously, whatever happens, like, you guys go down in this area because of the earthquake. Obviously, the end of the story is y'all escape or nobody escapes. Those are the two main endings. Mm-hmm. It's just in the one where y'all escape, it's a variation of, like, it's this many people escape or only one person escapes or X, Y, Z. And there's so many different things that can happen throughout, um, which I really appreciate. Like it it makes a game like into some, it's more of like a personal experience rather than just like playing Spider-Man for PS5 where you're just like, yeah, Mm -hmm. this is the game. This is how I'm playing it. The game's over. Okay. Now what do I do? You know, you have options to go back and experience a completely different story, which is really cool. But right, right, right. I, I, it looked good. Yeah. I mean, it, the graphics look good. Gameplay looks good. I've heard. I've never heard a bad thing about these games. So, yeah. I, I just feel like they should have shown more. Obviously, um, if you were here live, this is the podcast video version. Um, if you were here in the live stream, we looked at the Twitch and YouTube chat of people watching it, and people were like, "What the fuck? Like, what just happened? Right? Why? Why is that the only thing you showed?" Why would you end E3 with this? To be fair, at the end of this night, there is the game 
like the awards for E3. Um, I don't know what that is still. What is the E3 awards? I have no idea. I'll end up watching it, but I'm not. We're not live streaming it, no. so don't expect. Maybe we'll talk about it on next week's podcast for next Thursday, if like there was something that needs to be talked about or maybe if there's something very big that's shown we'll go live say, for watch a second. them announce something there watch yeah. them be like oh and before you go yeah i mean honestly that's what's gonna end up happening but like there's no reason for us to preemptively stream something that there's no information about it's which... gonna come on and immediately be like god of war rack rock yeah no right i'll just <laughs> end our lives um as of that point, I just go live on Twitch immediately, and I'm like, get yeah. the fuck down to your computer. Let's go. <laughs> they just announced Ragnarok. There's gameplay. But um, there definitely was not, most likely. It releases in October. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> October, September. Holiday 2021. <laughs> but um, so that was that. Next up is Nintendo. That was the yeah. bulk of today. Um, pre- prefacing it without not necessarily spoiling, but... um. Without like going to specifics, I'd say they didn't necessarily win E3, but they did show up and they showed yeah. a lot of cool stuff. Some I, stuff I think that... they had a good E3. I think Nintendo yeah. had a good show. I feel like if E3 was like if every single panel was as good as Nintendo's, I wouldn't think that E3 would get a bad rap. Like if you just have good stuff that's just quality, it doesn't need to be like out of left field, like amazing reveals. As long as it's just like quality good reveals like five to ten good stuff maybe like a couple like things in there that are just you know to make a little bit of money on the side Mm -hmm. it would be such a better program every single year um and don't show up with just one fucking interview of a game that you already showed at jeff keely's event um but if you're watching the video version i'm gonna have the videos up as we discuss this um and if you aren't watching the video version Hi, Audio Amigos. We appreciate you, too. Um, So to start off the stream for Nintendo, they kicked it off with Smash. Um, They revealed a new character by having this character take Ganon and drop him off this giant mountain into lava. Mm -hmm. Um, What's this character's name again? Because I don't... Kazuya. Kazuya. Like Kazoo. Yes, Kazoo with ya at the end. Yeah, like, because he's Kazoo Kid all grown up. (laughs) If if anybody listening or watching remembers the older Tekken games, Kazuya's ending was him dropping someone off a cliff. I mean, in case you don't want a spoiler for an almost 20-year-old, probably a 20-year-old game at this point. um, Yes, he dropped someone off a cliff in those games. He also becomes, and once you see the, the, once the trailer starts, you'll immediately recognize it if you remember those games. Mm-hmm. If you're in that culture, you'll immediately know what it looks like. Because as soon as it came on, I was like, is this Tekken? Yeah. And then it's, they showed who it was, and of course. It was funny, because like you said, is this Tekken? And I said, I think it's Smash. And then it was like, it's both. Like him right. dropping all the characters off the side of the cliff, too, was also just a really cool shot. Like, going from captain falcon to like more cartoony characters by the end throwing off the arms character like right. and like kicking the arm off that like stayed <laughs> up there because of the spring um very cool it was cool to see that he plays more like i guess his his actual tech self, which is pretty neat right um you don't actually play like smash style you may play more like combos and shit because I-, I asked you that is that the way it is and then it starts showing all the dudes like different moves and shit and like the different combo breakers right. and there's like right. this combo and that combo and I was like oh so it is that because like that ain't Smash like and then he kills Kirby but doesn't <laughs> but doesn't that was that was great yeah I, I like I, how they Nintendo fight it yeah it was a good way to end it because it was very dark and dismal and then it <laughs> brought it back to lighthearted for the rest of the stream which was very nice like yeah. they they know what they're doing. The, the the funniest thing was like the people he decided to drop yeah. Ganondorf then Captain Falcon then Pit yeah then Pit and then the um arms person spring wasn't it the spring chick yeah and um and Kirby yeah but it's like I guess they knew better than like well, I guess he can't kill Mario true or Link 
but then it's funny because if you remember the um the Ridley trailer, mm-hmm. like Mario dies in that trailer. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he stabs him with his tail and Mario's just gone. Damn. But um yeah, I I'm not I'm still a Switch owner that does not own the Smash game because I feel like it's just way too late for me to buy that. Um, Never too late. I mean, it is and isn't. Like, I'm just not good at Smash, and I know it. Like, I'm I'm good at Smash when it comes to like party settings. Like, when it's just like one v ones or like mm-hmm. people that actually know how to play. I'm shit. Like, <laughs> I'll play Ike and Kirby and Yoshi sometimes, but that's about it. And like Wario as a joke to do the fart thing, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. But, um. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a fun time. He looks like a very, like, powerful character. I will yeah. um, mention, they definitely did not say he's a part of the Fighter Pass. Because that's one thing we were talking about live. I was like, they did not say Fighter Pass. It looks like it's just a collab with Tekken. So, he might not be a part of the Fighter Pass. He yeah, might I'm just pretty be... sure he's part of Fighter Pass. I think but they didn't say part. it. They didn't say right. it. Well, I'm, I think they'll probably elaborate more on the thing. The, his like presentation. the next one, yeah. They'll probably show the. There's one more character after him, though, right? To be announced for that fighter pack. Yeah. Waluigi. Which is nervous for me, <laughs> which makes me nervous. I'm like that. That was the spot taken because it's like yeah. there were so many characters rumored. So if he's taking a spot, that means there's one, there's so many characters that could be in that last spot, and he wasn't even a rumored character. So that was yeah. left field. That that very much came out of nowhere from for me at least being like a casual tech not tech and casual like smash guy i was just like that's that's a weird like for your last two characters to have that be one of the two slots almost but um i mean it looks good the the smash mm-hmm. looks cool i saw on twitter someone was saying that he might have two different versions of his final smash like one where like it's just him regular and then a second version where it's actually um like him in his demon form like mm-hmm. two different versions so that'd be pretty neat um, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, after that, we got the announcement of Life is Strange, both the new game and the actual like uh, remaster collection. That's all coming to Switch. Coming to Switch. That's a big deal. It is a big deal. Uh, I'm curious to see with the friends that I know that play the game, if they decide to switch over to Switch or if they want to keep on the consoles that they currently play on. I'm not entirely... The main friend that we know that plays this game is Anna. She sent in questions multiple times to the show. I'm not sure if she's a PlayStation person when it comes to these games, but um, obviously with the achievements, mm-hmm. it's probably like, you know, maybe that. My internet connection is unstable, it says on my stream. Bullshit, I'm not dropping any frames. Uh-oh. You're a liar. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not sold on the new one yet, in my opinion. After the one trailer we got previously and earlier in the week, Oh no, I'm losing connection to Ant. Ant. Hello. I can you hear me and see me? You see me? Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, you, you stuttered for a second there, you were frozen. For me. Maybe Am I that's good now? what it was. Yeah, you're you're good now, you're good now, you're good. But um uh that one trailer we saw earlier at E three was slightly meh, in my opinion. Like it was where weird and it was all about mm. like her power being empathy. I was like, that's kind of empathy. It was, it was meh in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> I don't want to talk shit. Um, it's just not for me. I've never played those games. I've never been interested in those games. Not that they're bad games. They just never caught my eye. But you, oh, you're chunking. And huh? oh no, your what? your internet seems to be going out. Are you downloading porn, Mr. Ant? No, not today. Um, one second. Am I still gone? You're not gone. It's just like you'll stop for like maybe 10 seconds and like freeze up and then come back immediately. Perfectly fine. Am I perfectly fine right now? Right now you are. Yeah. I'm going to keep it going until it fucks up again. Okay. I'll edit it around <laughs> this. We're fine. We'll do it live. <laughs> am i still here yeah yeah you were talking <laughs> oh, no, I, I, oh i thought i froze again I was, no no i'm waiting on you to finish your thought oh. i'm paranoid now no what i what i said was um it looks good i don't i'm not necessarily the audience for this game i've never played these games 
but I like that people like them, and I've heard a lot of, about people liking them, so mm-hmm. I'm glad it's here. Yeah, you know, for the audience that it's for. I think it's a good game to have in the ecosystem. That like, there's a lot of games right now that are just first person shooter. Like, well, yeah, that's how they all like, start. Well, that's that's Life is Strange it. probably started yeah. as that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wait till next year, the Life is Strange battle right now. They just took the guns away and was like, let's just have them talk. Pretty much. It's just about the emotions now. Right. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not sold on the new game, but I'm also not digging on it, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not, there's no, sh- like, shade coming from me about it. I'm just not a day one guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's available September 10th. So, pretty soon, September, October are stacked with games right now. So, that is exciting to see. After that, we got the announcement that Square Enix will be giving Guardians of the Galaxy to Switch as well. That was a shock to me. Yeah. Um, I don't know if either of us or any people that we know will be playing it on Switch, per se. Because no. most of the people that we know that would want to play this game will want to play this on a next-gen console. Mm-hmm. I will be PS5 with this. Um, Likewise. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Nico's in the chat. I don't know if you're interested in Guardians or not. We haven't heard from you from the Square section. But... Um, yeah, man, I'm I'm PS5 for that. It is cool that it's coming to Switch for an audience that probably like a younger audience and like. Yeah. It's also weird to me because I thought that game was rated like like PG thirteen M, in that area because you know, Star Lord's right. raunchy and there's literally a scene where he's getting done fucking a tentacle monster and he's like, "I'll call you" at the end of the trailer, which they didn't show in the Switch. They didn't part. show it. Yeah, yeah, they didn't show it in there. So like, is it censored on Switch? Do you think? No. No, they got um Mortal Kombat is on Switch, the newest one. Okay. Uncensored. Okay. I think Nintendo has passed the point of not allowing shit like that on their consoles. Now they won't openly and consistently advertise the raunchy stuff, mm-hmm. but they're they let the game go on there. Like Doom Eternal is on there. True. They showed that as well, I believe. Right. Later they did. on, but um. Yeah, I mean, it's cool that it's on Switch. I'm glad that it's on multiple platforms. Um, we'll see how that looks compared to PS5 when that does come out. Right. Um, after that, they talked about Worms Rumble, which is the Battle Royale version of Worms. Um, I'm not a fan of this. I think it's a slap in the face to people who actually like the actual game of Worms, where it's like the turn-based, ar- like, like arcade-based game, mm-hmm. where you're trying to like time and use the right weapons to beat another team um i tried this i gave it the good old college try it was free on psn Mm -hmm. i hate it It, it's it's garbage i'm sorry them all man yeah um that is just my personal opinion the person i did play it with loved it um (laughs) to be fair um but i was just like i i could not like it it's a side scrolling br which is weird. Like, a side-scrolling BR isn't the problem. It was just that it was the IP. Like, that was my main issue that I had. It was like, this IP is such a well-known IP for being what it is. Like, you can expand upon that and make it better. Right. But making it into a BR is just cheap and, like, thoughtless. And it's really annoying, to me at least. Especially after being a PS Plus game, now bring it to Switch. That means people are going to have to pay for this after it was free. And it's not on a free-to-play model. So, there's no reason for, in my opinion, this game to exist. You would think it would be. Like, Switch has some free-to-play games. I would... They need to expand that area. Yeah. And I think they should do that. That would make sense to me. If it was free-to-play, I wouldn't be mad. Um, Like, straight up, like... It's. I'm not mad at the game existing per se. I'm. It, I am also. Mm-hmm. I'm not, it's. It's a weird in between. Like it. There's a crowd for it, but it's just. I hate that it exists. Um, after that, we got a new trailer, and with like a little bit of gameplay for a game called Astria Ascending. Um, yeah, I didn't really know what this was. You said you had seen this previously. Um, yeah, it's like it's an anime RPG. Yeah. But you know, I thought I liked the art style. I thought it looked pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty close to that art, but it's it's dangerously close to that art style that you don't like. That paper the, doll. But type I think it art works style. though, because it's animated well. You know what I mean? Like yeah. as opposed to the previous game where that I was talking shit on it, 
it just didn't look right. This one, like, I noticed it at first, but then I was like, okay, at least it looks good. Like, the physics look good. There's weight in these characters when they're, like, jogging around and shit. Mm-hmm. And, like, even, like, the combat with the turn-based stuff, like, it looks good with the attacks they're doing. Like, I'm not mad at this one as it was the other one that we were showing at Summer Games Fest. Right. But, um, yeah, it looks like a good, uh, you know, just turn-based RPG, fun mm-hmm. combat time. Um, no release date on that. It was just a quick, you know, here's some gameplay. Um, then we saw that Two Point Campus is also coming to Switch, which we've seen numerous times previously in this week. We right. saw it at the previous uh, Nintendo event where they showed Sonic's going to be on it and shit. Or is mm-hmm. that Two Point Office? I don't know. That was Two Point Hospital. Hospital, that's what it was. I'm assuming they're going to end up doing some Sonic shit in here too, just because I feel like that's a... They're just going to put them in everything. Might as well. Fuck it. Um, after that, the 20th anniversary of Super Monkey Ball was talked about with mm-hmm. a collection, it seems, of the old games. Um, let's see what games it all says that it's going in there. 20th anniversary, um, Super Monkey Ball 2001, uh, Super Monkey Ball 2 from 2002, Super Monkey Ball Deluxe from 2005, Super Monkey Ball Touch and Roll, Super Monkey Ball Adventure, Banana Blitz, um, Step and Roll, 3D, Super Monkey Ball uh, Monkey Mania is what it's called. So it looks like it's a collection with all of these old games celebrating the 20-year anniversary, all remastered. Um, Looks pretty good. Harry and ladies and gentlemen, your balls are on Switch. Hell yeah. Little monkey balls. I feel like it's going to be fun on Switch, man. With the uh, motion controls and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Switch is kind of made for it. Yeah. Um, We were discussing when it was live on the stream that neither of us have actually played Super Monkey Ball prior. Um, I've played variations of it, you know, like where they pretty much copy and paste the game and just change what the ball is. Mm-hmm. But um, it's a fun game. It's a nice little, like, I don't even know what you would call it. It's like a balance-based platformer it's like a party uh party puzzle platform party puzzle game yeah. party puzzle platform three p's i mean because it is platforming in most of it too because like you have to keep on the platforms without falling off you make your way to the goal yeah so it's kind of that but that's october 5th 2021 yep only on switch um after that we got some mario party news um mario party superstar I think it's, yeah, it's Superstars. Um, It pretty much has a ton, yeah, it's Mario Party Superstars. Over 100 plus mini games, remaster boards from the Nintendo 64 game, like Peach's Mm -hmm. Birthday Cake and Spaceland. Those look really good. They do. Um, They didn't show it in the trailer, but they did in the the treehouse that was afterwards, um, where they showed the N64 maps. And then they showed the mm-hmm. up-res versions, and I was like, holy shit, that's insane. They really went to work Yeah. It. Um, They had, like, some gameplay going on when uh, we were watching that treehouse for a, a little bit before we uh, played right. some of the demos of other games that were announced at E3. But online play is supported, and it looks like a good time. Straight it's up. Good. Looks fun. Yeah. Um, Party style. Nothing, nothing matters. matters. There you go. <laughs> Uh, if you didn't see that, Ant scream that in the live stream, and you can see it on YouTube coming soon. Um, yeah, so Super Mario Party Superstars. October 29th, yet another October title. And the pre-orders began today, too, so... I saw. Go and grab that. I think the next one is my highlight, right? Is it your... your no, your it man? isn't. It's your highlight. My um, highlight. Metroid 5. Which A-K-A. is, what, what is it? What's the Metroid the, Dread? Dread, gotcha. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm so excited for that. It looks insanely good. Um, in the treehouse as well, there was some gameplay shown, where this person, who no offense, was god awful at the game. She wasn't the best. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was just annoying because like she, you you could tell it was because she was trying to like be like a color commentator while playing yeah. the game. But I'm like, you have two other co-hosts. Let them carry it and then just go off. Just play. Yeah. yeah. Like, she got this thing where I guess you can't take out these giant white robots without charging your gun and getting this option to turn your gun almost to, like, a third person over the shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um, 
that looks so fucking cool to me, like, that you get that as, like, an option to use. But she got it, and she just kept running from the white thing instead of killing it. Because, like, you have to run away if you don't have that. Right. But she had it, and she just kept running. And I'm like, lady, kill the thing. <laughs> like, you I just she, got it. From when I, the style she was playing with, she kept trying to do the melee counters on it. Yeah. And failing. So it was like she just kept running into it. Mm-hmm. To the point where it's just like, just jump over it. Just yeah. move. Like, stop trying to do this, the stylized thing. It, it's really but, um, cool, too, because there's different color variations of those robots. And it looks like each of them do different things. It looks like the uh, yellow-green one. You can, like, hide from it in the dark or something. Mm-hmm. There's also a yellow one that's, like, just fast as fuck. Like, just sprinting at you. There yeah, there it is right there. Was, yeah, there, is. there was one that was like stalking the hell out of her mm-hmm. like, in the video, like up close. Yeah, and they get extremely close, and if they catch you, you pretty much just die straight on the spot, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it looks really good. Um, Metroid Dread. I don't think we got a release date, did we? No, we did. October. October 8th, 2021. My video was a little, like a second slower than it. I needed to say that. Um, but yeah, that's coming out October. We got Lucas and the Chase. Let's go. They can take my money. I feel that. Yes. I'm in the same boat, and I've never played a Metroid before. So, I'm already on board with it. Um, that is, that's, I guess that's going to be my, uh, yeah, October 8th. That's going to be my holiday Nintendo game since... You know, we'll get to it, but yeah. the um, big one was pushed. They talked a little bit more about Dread. There's some Amiibos you can get for it, which look really cool to me. Um, I'd very much like a toy of the the enemy, because I like the like weird joints right. and like like the uh, the gangliness of it. I feel mm-hmm. like that would lend itself well to an actual toy as opposed to just being an Amiibo. Um, after that. Just Dance was announced that they're back and at Switch. Another game, Chris is yeah. pre-ordering. I'm not pre-ordering. I have no problem with Just Dance. I just don't think that it I belongs know. at E3. No <laughs> offense to them. I get you have to make your money, but like you're gonna make your money even if you're not at E3. There's hardly any people who are watching E3 that are here for Just Dance. I know that Nicole likes Just Dance, which is fine, but it's just it's whatever. Um, next, we got Cruisin' Blast. Um, nice arcade racer um, with the similar takes of, like, you know, back in the arcade days where you'd be driving on the machine, you slam on the gas pedal and you go, like, and zoom back and shit. Um, looks very fun. The fact that they brought Cruisin' back to consoles is yeah. hilarious to me and great. It's also I'm funny because having... you definitely asked for this earlier in the week. Not this specific, like, IP. But you're like, I want an arcade racer. I miss the arcade racers. And they specifically brought one back. But um, yeah, it looks cool. You can play as a unicorn with wings. I just uh, I saw that just now on the on the feed. I was like, oh shit. But uh, yeah, it looks like a fun time. Nice little arcadey racing game. Not to take itself too seriously. Right. Um, mm-hmm. A little bit of drift action. But yeah. Uh, after that, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is coming to Switch. Um. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, I have not seen amazing things about. You have seen much worse things than I have, apparently. I just pe- like they. I heard it gets repetitive and yeah. it gets boring. Um, it look, you know what? One thing I'll say about it: it looks great. It looks like the anime, like yeah. more than any of the other Dragon Ball Z games that there have been. This is the anime, but three D, mm-hmm. straight up. And if I'm just looking at it, yeah, I want to play this. I don't know, maybe. I told CLD when we were watching this that if you see it on sale to get it, maybe if it, it's it been out so long, I'm sure I could find it for super cheap on consoles. Yeah. On, like, PlayStation, probably. So Maybe it'll come cheap know. to Switch. You never know. Maybe um, I'll just take my own advice, find it for cheap, and just t- test it out. Um, I was telling you, if you guys are listening to the podcast or Lucas that's in the chat, it's funny because the uh, voice actor for Goku, the American one, He's been streaming this, and like, because of how ridiculous of a game it is, there's actually a small clip of the section, the fishing part, and like, there's a scene where he's like, oh yeah, let's go fishing, and Goku pulls out his tail from like when he had the tail, plugs it into his ass, because <laughs> like, he doesn't have it connected anymore. That's how he can go Super Saiyan, if you watch Dragon Ball Z, mm-hmm. and fucking 
it's I think it's, his name is Sean Shemel or Shemel. He's like, oh yeah, just plug that into my hole real quick, and then like Goku's got his like hands on his knees like an anime girl, like dipping his tail into the water to fish, and then just yanks out this giant fish, and Sean's <laughs> like, yeah, I could fe- feed a family of seventy six with this, but I won't. I'll eat the whole thing. <laughs> like, but um, he goes back to work to voice Goku, and they're like, we heard the things you said. Yeah, you're fired. <laughs> but it looks like it does a lot of the story, like um. It has every single saga up to Cell and the androids, whatnot. And it even goes into Dragon Ball Super, it looks, with, like, Battle of the Gods type stuff because it shows that at the end. So I guess that's what the uh, the New Power Awakens set is. Mm. And that's available 24th of September. So another September release. Which... All of this is just... Yeah. It's just lining up. Yeah. Um, next, they showed off the Mario Golf... I'm starting to get swayed more and more by this game by the day. Mm-hmm. Um, on stream, we teased a little bit about, like, maybe we play this as, like, a fun, like, video series. Like, go halvesies on that shit. But, um, I don't know. I-, I like the idea of it being a golf game where it's, like, you're not only just playing golf. Because, like, while golf is slightly boring, in a sense, like, I've played golf actually before. Um, mm-hmm. Adding the whole, like, aspect of, like, needing to run to your ball and, like, beat your, like, opponents to the balls and, like, get around, like, different obstacles and stuff like that, using power-ups to get there faster. It's so cool to me, like, adding that extra aspect. Um, Battle golf is a thing, apparently. Very versatile. Yeah, so I feel like that's what I'm liking a lot more from this because it's it's adding an extra, like, fun factor to it besides it just being, like, a nice sport game that you just, you know play mm-hmm. for funsies it's also like really cool themed and also you can play in mario city which is pretty cool from odyssey yeah um but yeah we might play this let us know in the chat lucas would you be down for some videos of us playing this game yeah right um we'd, we'd make it worth your while yeah it comes out june 25th so 10 days away um oh. next we got some more gameplay from the Monster Hunter Story 2, which I am very high on. I'm, like, very tempted to buy this game. Um, it looks like it was just a lot more story aspect. We got a lot more gameplay shots, too, in this, mm-hmm. which is very cool to me. Um, I'm liking the aspect of being able to, like, train and ride your stuff around. On the stream, I was saying I kind of want them to copy-paste How to Train Your Dragon and do, like, That'd be decent. Some, cool. like, DLC where it's, like, you know, the riders versus the hunters. Because mm-hmm. that'd be a cool, like, dynamic of being, like, well, I'm a monster hunter and I'm a monster rider. You mm-hmm. shouldn't be killing these monsters. And then the hunters just being, like, yeah, I just want cool armor. Yeah, that'd be dope. But, um... I'd like that. I very much love this. Like, it looks so cool in this style. Mm-hmm. Um, when I played World, it was just a little bit too daunting for me. Because it was like super realistic, super serious with the story. The monsters were almost like scary looking, like because they are if you think about it. Um, they're monsters, but when you make them into like almost like not necessarily pets, but like companions, like friends yeah. that you like that you both use to each other's advantage. I think that makes it really cool. But that demo comes out the same day as the Mario Golf, and I will one hundred percent be picking that up. It looks really good. Like, I'm re-watching it right now. <clears throat> like, you know how you see it post-live? So mm-hmm. now it's all up and everything? It, yeah. It looks even more attractive to play. 100%. I'm very excited for it. Um, I know Nico is a Monster Hunter guy, so I know he's going to be down for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I very much w- I'm ready to play this game. It, it'll give me an excuse to play Switch again. Like, on a more regular basis, I think. Because ever since I, I'm, i like, very close to beating Breath of the Wild, and, like, same thing for Mario, like, I'm, like, mm-hmm. I don't want to beat them, if that makes sense, because then I have no reason to pick up the Switch at all. Like, right. right now, I could pick up my Switch, but I'm not, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, this next game, you'll definitely be picking your Switch up this for. This next game. I called this <laughs> shit needing to happen... Back in the day, the early days of the pod, of how much I love WarioWare. I loved it on Game Boy. 
and I love playing it so much in the back of the car with the Rumble Pack on the Game Boy Advance. Such we'll a good our, time. our live watch of the uh, Nintendo Direct and look, and look at the moment when yeah. Chris realizes that it's Wario's silhouette as they go into it. So much fun. Um, <laughs> with this new game, it looks like they're moving slightly away from the uh, motion control aspect. And more about, like, using the actual characters of WarioWare as, like, your cursor to do these little, like, mini-games and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not the same as OG WarioWare, but I'm I'm a fan of it. Because this also leads to maybe some sort of multiplayer I could see coming from that. Because you could use right. multiple characters. Like, if it's the one where you have the, uh, what's it called? Like, knock apples off trees or some shit. Instead mm -hmm. of being like working together for this co op mode, you could be like working against each other, Mario Party style. That would right. be very cool to add that aspect. But there is a co op mode, which you know for a fact we're playing on this YouTube channel when yeah. it comes out September 10th. We are all broke in September and October. And October. <laughs> this holiday season, all we want for Christmas is Nintendo Bucks. I don't. I'm, I don't plan to have any money left by Christmas. I don't know what my family's gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good point, man. I don't know. <laughs> I'll just 3D print you a bunch of shit, and you could just give that as like presents. Yep. Here's this. Here's a. Here's this clank robot. I know yeah, you yeah. all been waiting for. I'm making another one too. So <laughs> there's that. But um, this next game that was announced. Um, I don't know what the title is off the top of my head. Is it called Another Tokyo? Uh, hold on. Let me get, catch up. I'm watching along with you on the damn... Oh, wait, no. It's the, uh, what's it called? Um, you, you predicted the name of it. I can't remember what it was called. Oh, Shin Megami Tensei? Yes. Shin Megami Tensei 5? Five? 5, yes. Um, trailer started off looking very ominous and, like, almost dark, and then it went into a very... It's the, the the tone is still dark, but the environment changes to like this desert that's very bright, and um, it's like demons and angels and shit, and you fuse with the sky to become like this androgynous android knight technological character thing. I don't know. Listen, man, I've never played Shin Megami Tensei, so yeah, it it looks. I will say it is very. It looks fun, like the mechanics of it. Yeah. But I, like I said on the on the the stream, it looks like one of those games. Like this looks great. I'm not going to play it, but it looks really good. Yeah. Um, I will they, admit like, I was surprised by the turn based. I was like very like taken back by that. It didn't yeah. look like it was going to be turn based at all at at the start. But I like the fact that it's turn based, but it's a different take on turn based. Mm -hmm. Like you got the elemental stuff. You could talk to them, put a, get them on your side. That was pretty cool. That conversation that you have, you have a conversation with this, like, lion with a giant, like, metal spine tail, and if you want him to join your side, he's like, give me some of your health, and you can choose whether or not you want to do that, and if you do, then he's on your side for the foreseeable future, and I think that's really cool as, like, a, I don't know, it, it's a cool aspect to get allies as opposed to just right. being like, oh, yeah, I can get this person as a friend no matter what. And I'm assuming there's going to end up being something in the game where it's like you say, yes, I want you as an ally. And then the person will be like, well, no, fuck you. I don't want to be an ally. <laughs> Take like, this. Yeah. And then it's like the only way you get them as an ally is saying, no, I don't want you. And they're like, well, I'm going to do it anyway. Like, I kind of want that because I think that'd be kind of cool as like a different character, like flaw, I guess you would say. And keep in mind, listeners and viewers, like we've never played any of these games. Yeah, so if yeah. this has been a mechanic that's been around for the last four games, we have no idea. Yeah, but <laughs> seeing it with fresh eyes, it's very interesting. If it goes on sale, I would definitely pick this up. As a full yeah. price game, like for 60 bucks. I don't know if I'd be like a day one guy. Um, right. It is available in November, so we at least got one game in November to break up the uh, October and September games. Right. Um, and you can pre-order it now. Uh, well, not now. June 21st, Well, by the time you hear this, most likely. So yeah, yeah that sure. looked really cool. Um, after that, there was a little bit of Danganronpa. Yeah, man. First time on a, I think it's first time on a Nintendo console, period. This was uh, on PlayStation. PlayStation. The series on PlayStation now. It's on Switch. I saw people on Twitter, like, hype that, like, there's a Danganronpa on Switch. Yeah. Um, I guess it lends itself to being portable. 
true. Uh, I've never seen these games before, so I just have no idea what to even expect from the gameplay or what it is. Or the only thing I've seen is like the iconography of that bear. Like I've seen like stickers of the head mm-hmm. where it's like the half and half. Um, that's about it. <laughs> it looks very. Um, it looks super anime, like, more than most of the other stuff where we're like, it looks anime. Like, this looks like, oh my god, anime, to the point where this guy has, like, Super Saiyan Trunks hair that we were talking about on the stream. Right. Um, and then it ends with, like, this white-haired guy in a in a hoodie. <laughs> and then some weird dice game where you... There's just a lot happening. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't tell what the objective was. It looked a little uh, Ace Attorney-ish. At the moment. Like, they're yeah. trying to solve a case. It's very wordy. That's it, it's mm-hmm. like these games. I never know what to expect when it comes like from gameplay. Like the story is probably great, and like you probably care about these characters when you play them. But um, for me, it's like I want to see like what I'm doing m- more or less than like why should I care about these characters? At mm-hmm. least in the video game sense. But um, there's some games where I'm like I want to know what these characters. But like something like this, I'm like I need you to show me more than yeah. just the characters in a bunch of words on the screen that's going by too fast for me to actually read. So, yeah, D- Danganronpa Decadence is what it's called, and it's available later this year, so probably October, seeing probably how everything October. goes. Yeah. October it is. Yeah. Um, after that, um, oh, also, uh, Trigger Happy Havoc Danganronpa Anniversary Edition, Danganronpa 2, and S and V3 are all available later this year as well. So they're porting those old games too, which is pretty cool. Dope. Yeah. Um, this next one, uh, kind of like a horror game um, in a very, like, looks like the style of, like, Final Fantasy with the character design from, a uh, what was it just said on the screen? Sorry, I missed it. Koei Temco Games, Fatal Frame, Maiden of the Black Fatal Water. Frame. Um. It's Fatal like, Frame was the thing before, but I don't follow it enough to remember. I think it was PlayStation. Yeah. When they showed gameplay, it's it looked like Pokemon Snap, but with ghosts. Because, like... <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, like, there's all these ghosts and stuff, and, like, spirits attacking you, and the only way to get rid of them is to, like, take pictures of them or something. That'll do it. Yeah. Um, there's, like, multiple characters, apparently... Each character has their own story and storylines in the game, mm-hmm. and you get to play as each one. Obviously, um, it's very dark and dismal, and like very horror game esque. Um, oh, for sure. Later this year as well, so probably another October September game. No specific date as well. What was next? So next they did that quick fire of games and DLC coming soon. Got a little bit of a look at Doom, Doom Eternal, um, with the Ancient Gods DLC. Right. Um, it's cool. It's on Switch, I guess. I don't know who would want to play Doom on Switch. I feel like that's a weird flex. Um, <laughs> Someone who only has a Switch. I guess, yeah. I feel the same exact way, but then I'm sitting here thinking, like, all right, we, we're talking from a privileged standpoint. True. If I'm a kid... And my parents don't want to buy me the next, or or can't find the yeah. next gen console to give me, and all I have is Switch. This is so how they I'm get like, the uh, the rated M game. Is they just yeah. say, "Oh yeah, it's called Doom." And or then, from anyone who just can't get a PS Five, and I don't yeah. play Xbox, and I don't have games. But like, there's people out here that that's their only option. Okay. And if that's your only option, then yeah, by all means, if you want, I want you to experience these games. So experience them. True. True, true. I mean, it looks good for what it is. Like, even watching the replay back, um, it definitely doesn't look as high fidelity as, like, you know, like a main console like PlayStation or Xbox. Right. But it does its job to get you the story and the gameplay that you want from a Doom. So, it looks pretty exactly. good. Yep. Um, after that, we got a look at Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, the remastered edition that is now coming over to the Switch as well. Um, this has been out for a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. Um, I know my buddy Brett from Heptic Intel. He's been playing this game. He loves the uh, Tony Hawk series. Personally, I've been wanting Classic, um, Underground to come back. I would mm-hmm. love to see a remastered of Tony Hawk Underground 1 and 2. I think it was 2, right? Um, I don't remember. I think I kind of stopped after 5. 
Gotcha. Yeah, Broke Gator 5. I never played uh, Underground. But um, this one looks cool. You can make your own character. There's the whole graffiti mode where like it's like a 1v1. You got to paint the uh, areas by like grinding on it or doing mm-hmm. tricks there. It's pretty neat. Um, looks like a good time. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of lends itself to Switch. I don't know. Like Obviously, it's a good on PlayStation and whatnot, but I feel like it's a nice little game to have on like a handheld. Just skate around and have a good time. I agree. Uh, they were after, oh yeah I miss them plus the music was always 10 out of 10 too mm-hmm. um, there's one and two for underground thank you Luke Duke I appreciate you I think I only played one because that was the one with uh, the, the douchey friend that had like the drug problem that used you to get like famous and shit it was like heavily campaign driven um, but next up was Rebellion's Strange Brigade starts off with this like mummy character coming back from the dead I barely um, remember this trailer. Like, I remember it, but I barely remember it. We were talking over this one a lot. We were probably still talking about whatever came on, like the Tony Hawk <laughs> previously or something. When we were, when this was on, we were talking about the Switch Pro, I think. Oh, yeah. Because um, I remember, like, this, we were starting to talk, like, is it actually going to be here? Is it not? Blah, blah, blah. Spoiler alert. It wasn't. Um, and, I mean, it doesn't look like a bad game rewatching over it. It's like a co op no. shooter with puzzles involved. Okay, yeah, now I remember this. Um. Yeah, it almost seems like like an Indiana Jones game, like you're four people searching for treasure underground with like monsters and shit in this area, but also guns. Guns. Also guns, because everything's a shooter. Yeah. After that, we got a little bit of more of a look at the Rayman, Raving Rabbids, and Mario Sparks of Hope. Um. Yeah, we've seen this three times now. Yes. Game Fest, Ubisoft, and now here. Mm-hmm. I feel like Ubisoft and Nintendo make the most sense. It's kind of weird that they gave it to Jeff to show, and then us, like the two other people as well. Um, I think they gave us a little bit more gameplay clips this time. It looks like it's very similar to the ones we've already seen, but you know, it, it's kind of the same gameplay when it comes to these games, where it's like the uh, tactic type fighting. Um, oh wait, this wasn't on... Um... Games Fest. It wasn't? I thought it was. This was, um... So it was just Ubisoft, uh, then? Ubisoft and Nintendo. Okay. But that's, uh, 2022 when that's available. A little bit farther out. Um... After that... The next one we got was one that people are very, very hype about. Um... I don't know this game title. Which one? The oh. tank one. <laughs> Armor Wars, maybe? Or Advance Wars? Oh, Advance Wars, yeah. Yeah. I've never played People an Advance Wars. Freaking War. out about that. Yeah. Um, it's definitely remastered looking. The tanks look uh, very high fidelity compared to... People who are a big fan of the Game Boy Advance era, this was like it, a huge deal. I, I never had any of these games, and that was like the... Uh, the one thing. I knew people with this game and they loved it. Like they bring their advanced to school and play it. Like <clears throat> that's how long ago it was, ladies and gentlemen. The old man was in high school. Um <laughs> But yeah, people people have been wanting it back. They even an indie team actually put out an indie game that's in the same realm as Advance War. They obviously they couldn't call it that. Gotcha. But um it was called something similar. And when people liked it, they just said it was hard. But they've been wanting classic Advance Wars back, and people are very happy to have it back. Yeah. Um, it's 1 and 2. They're calling it Reboot Camp, and it's available December 3rd. So that, I think that's one of the one or two of the only ones that we've gotten in December for reveal dates this E3. Mm-hmm. Most of them have been October, September, obviously. Um, but this one's early December. Uh, mm-hmm. We got Lucas in the chat saying, Illinois is buying <laughs> Advance Wars, but he meant to say I'm. <laughs> So he's buying this. I mean, um, someone in Illinois is just certainly buying this game. Are you moving to Illinois, Lucas? Is this your way of telling us? Is we'll that how you want to break the news, Lucas? <laughs> we'll we'll miss you, sir. <laughs> but um, after that, we got some gameplay footage and looks at the DLC for Hyrule Warriors. Mm-hmm. Um, we thought this was going to be the last thing. It was not. The last thing was also sad, though. But um, this Age of Calamity Hyrule Warriors, um, 
I still haven't beaten Breath of the Wild, so there's no reason for me to pick up another Zelda thing. Um, it looks all right. It, I think it's cool that you can. It looks like you can play as the actual like Walker Johns and then use their legs as like whips when you're playing Link. That was dope to see. And my favorite part was this clip that just showed. I'm gonna reverse back to it if you're watching the YouTube video version. Um, he swings it into the Bob Goblins or whatever they're called, grabs one of their weapons, and then while using the whips that have claws, uses the whip the weapon at the end of the whip to like smash the crowd of people, which was so cool. Um, they gotta bring that to Breath of the Wild too now. <laughs> oh yeah, those whips look amazing. I love that idea as a weapon, but either way, um, Zelda's there. She's on the. The motorcycle horse thing but um this is the first dlc available june 18th there is a little uh road map here it's a purchase bonus available now links costume mm -hmm. with prototype ancient gear and weapon wave one has all this new stuff that you just saw in the trailer for the playable character of new guardian so you can play as the battle tested guardian weapon types you get the flail for link and the master master cycle for zelda apocalyptic difficulty level New challenges in the Royal mm -hmm. Ancient Lab, newly added challenge enemies, and Wave 2, Guardian's Remembrance, comes out in November 2021, which... Yeah, they're just, supporting this game for a while. Yeah. Um, so that's currently $19.99 US dollars, out right now. And June 18th is about three days away, so as of the time listening to this, that should be out by now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the last thing that we got was uh, the producer of Legend of Zelda, E.G. Aonoma. I'm not good at names. Um, I'm here for you. He pretty much respectfully asked us to wait for Breath of the Wild 2. Um, Listen, Aonoma. Wait, no. He didn't do that yet. He talked about Skyward Sword. My bad. Skyward Sword HD coming out. Yeah. Um, showed off more gameplay of that. It looks okay. Um, earlier in the stream, when this was on the stream live, and we were live reacting to it against Nintendo's wishes, um, CLD was saying that he's 100% buying those new Joy-Cons that are coming out. They're nice. They're super nice Joy-Cons. I am very much tempted by it. I am. But um, it looks pretty good. I'm not super into this, but I'm not against it. Mm-mm. Um, I feel like I'm more of a Breath of the Wild type Zelda game player as opposed to something like this where it's like you need the motion controls. Right. Um, that's available June 16th. He also showed this uh, Mr. Game & Watch of Zelda. <laughs> the Game & Watch handheld thing. Um, if you go back and watch our live reactions, my face is just like, bruh, the whole time. Because like, I see these on the shelves of Walmart still to this day of the first one that came out. I think it was like, was it Mario? It was what? One that came, there was yeah, a, it was a Mario one. Yeah. They're still on the shelves. And like, they're not selling because they're expensive. Like, they're like, I think almost a hundred bucks. You could have sworn, like people, <laughs> people were clamoring for them things and they were getting reposted and. And the links were getting re-put up. Like, hey, they're back up. They're back up. And to t for you to tell me that they're just sitting around in Walmart, I'm like, damn. Yeah. I, like, they've literally been in the Walmart that I live by. Lucas will know mm -hmm. exactly which one I'm talking about. It's right near Trash Mountain. If you're not in PA and a fan of us from somewhere else, you have no idea what the fuck I'm referring to. But there's a thing called Trash Mountain that I live by. Um, Those guys from Save for Quitting live near a Trash Mountain? Legitimately, yes. Um, <laughs> so that's a thing. I mean, I'm not I'm not mad that it's a thing. It's just one of those things where I, I've seen them on the shelf so much they don't sell. At least from what I've seen, but it's available on November 12th if you are interested in it. It's got four games on it. Mm -hmm. Um, what was the four games again? Let me go back. Uh, Original Legend of Zelda, Adventure of Link, Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening, and the Game and Watch Vermin game. But with Link's Just head. Link yeah. <laughs> so that's a thing. Alright, and then the final news thing was just him pretty much Everyone saying... Everyone waited for it. Yeah. He just respectfully asked us to wait for Breath of the Wild 2 because it's not ready yet. We got another 
little teaser trailer, which if you're watching the video version, you're here with us while we're watching it. Um, it looks good so far for what we've seen. There was another teaser trailer previously, which had gameplay in it, right? I thought. And then uh, this had gameplay. this show? Yeah. It was like, it wasn't game. It was like a cutscene. Yeah. And then we got gameplay in this. This one showed gameplay. Yeah. Um, we start off with Link dropping into Verdansk. Um, if you don't know what that is, go watch a Tim the Tatman video. Um, go, or go play Warzone. Yeah, one of those two. <laughs> but pretty much announced that the game is pretty much going to move to the sky as well as the land. So there's like little islands in the sky of the ground that's been pulled up from uh, below. And you can become goo version of Luigi as well, which was kind of weird. <laughs> um, I guess that's a new power up to like, they, get to they, the show, they showcase a lot of new powers. Uh, Link looks, I guess you can say older. His hair is like longer or something in this one. They show a lot of his stasis and like all those moves he kind of had, plus some new moves that help he like ascends into the sky, goes through, I don't know, whatever sky structure this is from the bottom up. Yeah. Like it, it looks like more of what we loved from the first one plus extra stuff. Mm -hmm. I like the, um, with the stasis one though, where it shows the scene of the uh, rock going uphill, how after you use the stasis, you don't have to hit it or anything. It just launches it up the hill and it shows like a, a track of like where it'll go yeah. with the force, which I like. Um, the water like teleportation thing where like you go up to the, like the tower. It's a little weird for this game in my opinion like for the breath of the mm -hmm. wild series like it's kind of the most cartoony thing i guess you could say that they've had for like a power but i guess so i'm not mad at it per se yeah. um i dig the idea of it still being the same map pretty much with like obviously some sort of changes to the cities and whatnot updates and whatnot right. Right. But then also whatever's happening villain wise or whatever's causing the the land to rise causing everyone to move to the skies and that being like a secondary area of play um it is 2022 we have no like time period of 2022 whether it's fall nope. whether it's spring whether it's summer whether it's winter um we you were slightly disappointed by this all right i'm i'm i'm, I'm of two two minds of it i i I'm disappointed because obviously as a gamer, I have the I want it now feeling. Don't care and how. I, I want it yeah, now. Exactly. And I wanted, as I called it on the stream, the three-headed monster of the holidays to be Zelda Horizon Halo. I wanted this, the, comp the, the three first-party companies to give us their, like, throw, put their dicks on the table, like, boom, this holiday. Those yeah. going to be great. For, for them to say 2022, that pushes it away. At the same time, they never announced the Switch Pro like they like was rumored, heavily rumored by every single outlet. So it was pretty much all but confirmed. At this point, it's all but confirmed. Like we know it's a thing. Yeah. They just haven't said anything about it yet. But pushing this up also let me realize the fact that there's going to be, they're going to just redo, this is my prediction. They didn't say this. No one said this. I'm saying this. And they're pretty much going to mimic the release of the first Switch. So I feel like Breath of the Wild 2 is going to come out in March, like the original Switch did, and it's going to launch alongside the Switch Pro. I feel like they're just coming full circle and just going to do it again. Yeah, uh, I, I feel like that makes a lot of sense. Um, it is sad that it didn't happen sooner, or at least like a nod to it, like at mm -hmm. least being a thing. Like, with, At least with Breath of the Wild 2, we at least got the date of 2022. That was my... Right like main takeaway is like as long as we're not speculating still right. you know like plus with 2022 as just like an overall year without saying what time of year that also leaves it for time to like if they needed to push it back per se mm -hmm. they can do that in silence as opposed to other companies where it's like oh we're pushing it back we're pushing it back when if you right. just didn't tell us we wouldn't know when to expect it in the first place so it's exactly. no big deal so if it doesn't drop in march i have no one to blame for that but yeah. me for and that's fine that. like you'll be disappointed per but at the same time they didn't say march but it's right. fine um overall 
I would say that what they did was pretty good. Like, it was a good showing. Like, yeah. it was a, we know you want Breath of the Wild 2, we're sorry, but this is the best we can give you as far as date. To suffice for that, here's a shit ton of gameplay, which was great. Right. Like, a lot of gameplay, a lot of new looks at the uh, character of Link, and look at the world, at, like, what to expect slightly. Obviously, mm-hmm. there's going to be much more that we don't know going into, like, the traversal and whatnot, probably. There's a part of me that almost wants, like, a grappling hook, like, function added. Because I feel like all no, these games... not going to be. I, like, I want that to be a thing. Because, like, Halo added it. What other games? Every added game it? adds it. Like, Doom Eternal added a yeah. grappling hook. Everything. A game with a grappling hook has become like, oh, this is going to be good. When you see a grappling yeah. hook, that game is going to be good. I feel like that would work good. so well for this, too. Like, And it wouldn't even have to be, like a, like, a constant use one. Like, it could even just be, like, like a weapon where it's, like, a bow and arrow... And instead of it being like you have X amount of, you know, arrows, you have X amount of times you can use the grappling hook and you can gonna use it. the arrows. That'd be cool. They're going to add it. Yeah. Zelda's known for a grappling hook and they call it a hook shot. It's been in, it was in Link's Awakening. It was in Link to the Past. It was in, um, not Skyward Sword, even though I think there might have been one in that. There's like two, three other Zeldas that have it. So it's almost like, I, if I if it shows up, I'm like, there it yeah. is. I wouldn't be surprised. If anything, I'd like them to even just introduce that as like a different arrow, like an arrow with a like a the rope chain on it, and you like shoot. A, yeah, and like you could either use it as a way to climb up something high where you know you don't have enough stamina, and like mm-hmm. when you climb the rope, it'll like just tell like you'll shoot the arrow, it'll hit there, and then you can just like pull yourself up to it, and then you could start using your stamina. Or you could also use it to, like, bind enemies to the ground. Yeah. Like, the bigger enemies. Like, you could, like, one of the guardians is coming at you. You shoot a binding arrow at it. It's like some Horizon mm-hmm. shit. Right. But, like, right. multi-purpose oh, it. Is Horizon, that's another um, forbidden the grappling, hook. The yeah. grappling hook now. It, give this game a grappling hook. But um, <laughs> it would work with the sky thing. Like, I feel like it I, makes sense. I But, see, I want, I want it to be more free-flowing than that. Mm. I want it to be like how we saw the um, Halo Infinite grappling hook. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It's just an extension of you. That thing is all over the place. Yeah, but but I know they won't because that game has such a heavy stamina system. Yeah, they're probably gonna find a way to link it to that. No pun intended. Link it to that. I, I feel like that would be cool if they did do that. Like when you use it, like it just takes a chunk uh, almost. Like when you like. Mm-hmm. Uh, like when you go and like jump from a high distance or so, or like when you jump when you're on a wall, yeah, like that type of thing where it's like if you want to use the let's say it is the hook shot. In my eyes, it's like you get the hook shot and you also get the uh, bow and arrow with mm-hmm. the rope arrow. Like you get both, but then like when you're using the hook shot, it's like it'll take that chunk of stamina, but like you'll go there instantly. And then maybe with mm-hmm. the rope arrow, it's like you still got to climb the rope like that style or you could yeah. slide down the rope from a high place to a low I place like that idea. and like you could use one of your weapons to like hold yourself on it that'd be right. really cool just like maneuverability because then when you're sliding down it you don't need to use stamina for that so you wouldn't mm-hmm. have to use your your glider to get down it would use less stamina it would, you could use it like strategically yeah. and while also using it offensively in battles which would be really cool I would love it if it kind of is like a combination of what we both said like if you could when you take it out and shoot it you can aim it where you want it but it kind of slows down kind of how you can do with the arrows on breath of the wild yeah you go but you have a limited time to shoot it where you you launch it it, and then go there launch it out and then you can even swing off it so you're swinging around before you can pull yourself up there like i think they can go a lot of places with it if they do another thing i want if they do the rope arrow i want there to be a way where you can put it on two areas so like one of the skulls where all the the boblins are mm-hmm. and like you just put it on like a low air area and then like you bait them out with a noise and they all trip over the arrows <laughs> like yeah, all over good. the rope like they just trip yeah. over it and like fall and like that causes the like right there yeah that'd be cool i would like that that ain't gonna happen it'd be cool though but if, um, <laughs> you, if you hire us nintendo yeah hire us for all these free ideas we're giving you on a free podcast off of a recording that we probably probably weren't supposed to record. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but yeah, that was Nintendo, Bandai, and Capcom. That's pretty much the end of E3. Um, 
next week on the podcast for the our, we're going back to the normal schedule. Mm-hmm. You've gotten a bunch of podcasts this week, a bunch of live reactions this week, a bunch of TikToks this week. You can say whatever you want about not having a podcast. Get over it. You got a lot. It's a lot. Um, we're probably gonna do our top five reveals. I think for each of us. Um, if you're here live in the chat, I know Lucas was here and Nico was here. If y'all mm-hmm. want to shoot us an email, give us your top five. What was revealed at E3? If you don't know what was real to D3, go watch our other podcasts yeah. and our live reactions, and you can see what was released. Um, we'll do a top five, um, go over some questions that we had that we've been holding for a bit, and see what we've been playing over these past couple weeks. So we've had some time to play. Um, we played a couple games today, but we'll save that because yeah. technically we played a game this week that we'll record at the end of the week. So we'll save that for later. Um, and We're yeah. We're still playing Ratchet, so that's... yes. Spoiler alert, we're going to both be talking about that game. I'm probably going to start playing that right after we get off this live stream. I think um, I can do the same thing. You should do it. It'll be a good time. Here, I'm, I'm not leaving little, the basement. We'll ratchet in the screen. I'll put it to the stream right quick. I painted him up, and he looks gorgeous. There you go, Ant. There's your visual of the boy. That's Clank. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, that game is great. Go play Ratchet and Clank. Go watch our TikToks. We put up two TikToks yesterday. They were both yeah. really fucking funny. And you might want to go check those. Yes. If you like our TikToks, share our TikToks. We got to start growing this podcast as a community of NGPs, in our yeah. personal opinion. Like, we love all y'all that do listen, but we want more l- people to listen so that we can really pop this off and get it going. So by next year at E3, Instead of Nintendo emailing us and saying, hey, you can't do this, they're like, we want you to. Come on our Treehouse Live. That's what we were yeah. aiming for. <laughs> we'll we, play better than that chick who was playing. That's exactly. Right. We want to be the next game over, Greggy. We want to be the ones talking and, right. and like hyping up all the streams. Let's get us there. We'll bring you guys along with us. We'll shout out the NGPs the whole time. Share our shit, whether it be a TikTok, whether it be the YouTube videos, whether it be our podcast. We know who is sending it. We appreciate you greatly. Do it more. (laughs) We love you. And we got some plans. We're going to have some conversations off mic about growing the show and there's some ideas floating around. Yeah. So the show is going to get better as we go forward. I can promise you that. And you'll see them. You might not even know certain changes are coming, but you'll see them. You'll notice. And um, yeah. That's about all we got here from the mm-hmm. Save Before Quitting Zoom HQ. And there's nothing much left that we can do besides always saving Save before, before quitting. quitting. Thank you for joining us, Lucas, Nico, and anyone else that was in the chat and silent. You guys have a good night. Appreciate you guys. Before we get to the next part so I can cut this out in the future and add our theme song. The outro's almost done. It's almost done. And goodbye.